Hi everyone, my name is Nate Gross and today I'd like to talk to you about how you can add creative programming and attract new players with Spec Tennis. So let's get started. So first let's get into why we need creative programming. The racket sports industry is changing. Our lessons may be full now, but what will happen when our clients retire? What will we do to get new clients? There are less standard tennis courts available. Uh, many courts are being converted to pickleball courts. We need to fit more players in the limited amount of space so that we can avoid having to reduce our program size. It's also nice to be able to remove any animosity between player groups such as the pickleball players and the tennis players. This can be healthy for the club finding ways to share the courts. Coming out of the COVID-19 crisis, the future is unknown. Many clubs may be looking to make cuts and convert to more profitable uses. With the creative programming I'll share today, you can fit more players in a smaller space, which can lead to greater than or equal to revenues that you had before and still observe social distance protocols. Tennis is not growing. Um, that's, if you look at that average, that's pretty flat for five years. From 2010 uh, to 2018, there was a decline of 5%. From 2000 to 2010, there was a lot of growth. So we need to get back to that. 16 million people have expressed interest in tennis, but as we know, the barriers of entry to tennis are high. We need to hook players to get them to stay in the sport. And I think that how we do this is by creating the fastest path to success. Programs like ROGY, Cardio Tennis, and Net Generation are a piece of the puzzle, but I don't think we can rely on those alone. Spec Tennis makes tennis success come easier and faster, but without the negative stigma that many have towards ROGY. I believe that tennis is worse off than it was just five years ago, and this is because of pickleball's popularity. Players that start off in pickleball don't often later switch to tennis, but tennis players switch to pickleball all the time. Pickleball is great for the racket sports industry, but we can't ignore the fact that we need to grow tennis as well. In this day and age, there's so many distractions, people's attention spans are very short, and there's many other options. So we have less time to impress people and attract their attention. More people want a quick fix, so activities like golf and tennis become less attractive. They're also seeking activities that can be completed in a smaller amount of time. And we've seen pro sports react by shortening their formats in order to keep the viewer's attention. With kids, it's even more difficult because there's more options where success might come easier than tennis. If you look at these video game stats, they're pretty scary actually, but we have to compete with things like video games when trying to get kids to come to our tennis classes. In other sports like basketball or soccer, success comes very easy, it's easily measured. If you shoot the basketball into the hoop, that's a great success, or if you kick the soccer ball into the goal. Even if you don't make a hoop or score a goal, if your team wins the game, that can be a good feeling of success because you contributed. But in tennis, success is harder to attain, harder to measure. You have to win a point or win a match, and many kids can't even rally, so how can they play a point or play a match? Simply having a coach feed them a ball out of a basket and them hitting it over the net, that's artificial. It's not a long-term feeling of success that they can keep appreciating. I believe that the more success a player has, the more fun they have and the, the longer they stay in the sport. We need to be able to catch the attention of potential new players. That's one reason why pickleball is so popular because anybody can come in with, with a variety of athletic backgrounds and play it immediately. With spec tennis, there is that, that looks fun. Maybe I'll try that feeling. In tennis, we don't have that. Right now, if you walk by a tennis court, you might see your friend Nancy playing. She's been playing for four years and she still misses every third shot. So you might think to yourself, there's no hope for me. Like I mentioned before, the pickleball also has that come try it feeling. So spec tennis can provide that same thing for tennis. We start getting a lot more players on the court. The lifetime value of pickleball, in my opinion, is lower. Um, in terms of lesson and clinic retention. Most of the revenue comes from tournaments, leagues, and camps. 
but with lessons from my experience and I'm a certified pickleball instructor as well, it's hard to retain clients from a, for a weekly lesson. Once you teach them the basic skills and strategies, they often go off uh, to social play. With uh, spec tennis, which I'm going to share with you, you're not only offering more amenities, but I believe that it has a higher lifetime customer value because the skills directly translate to tennis, which I'll share. So what do we need to do? I think we need to build a bridge. If you look at this neighborhood here where the player is, they often don't know the pathway to become good at tennis. In order to retain players, keep them engaged, attract new ones, and see player, players reach their maximum potential, I think we need this bridge. And I believe that bridge is spec tennis because it serves everyone, not just the kids. And it can also be its own entity. So let's dive in. What is spec tennis? It's played on a pickleball court using an orange dot low compression tennis ball and an 18 inch paddle with holes in it like the one you see in the photo. By bringing the sweet spot of the paddle closer to the hand, Using a smaller court and a slower ball, this leads to more success and higher engagement. So no longer do we have these barriers of entry that we have with tennis. It's also the fastest path to rallying. And I believe that is the key to getting people to enjoy tennis and getting the full experience. Because if you can't rally, you're not actually being able to play tennis. Here's a video just showing a little bit what spec tennis is, you can see that you can set it up in a variety of settings. So here they set it up in the driveway with a portable quick start net. Here's another driveway set up with a kid and his dad. And you can see how it looks exactly like tennis in terms of the strokes. Here's a more formal setting. So on the pickleball court during a tournament, check out this amazing drop shot. This is a setup on a tennis court for a spec tennis camp. Another temporary setup on a tennis court with some 5-0 level players. And then finally, the Cal Berkeley men's tennis team, a few players from that team having some fun out there. But these points last forever. It's really hard to end the point. So you end up with these spectacular points, no pun intended. <clears throat> so in spec tennis, there's no restrictions. And so a lot of you are probably familiar with pickleball. There's a no volley zone that applies to pickleball. That does not apply in spec tennis. You can also serve in volley. The scoring system is very easy. So it's no add and short sets. So you play first to four points wins the game. First to four games wins a set. You get one underhand cross court serve and the strokes and strategies directly translate to tennis. There's also no noise issues. So if you were playing this next to a group of tennis players, um, you wouldn't be getting complaints from them. And you can also play in a variety of surfaces and locations such as the service box on a tennis court, gym floors. And as you saw from the video, a lot of uh, playing at home in the driveway. So I believe that spec tennis is the key to growing tennis in the US again. Um, the reason is because players are more engaged. They can have early success with every single tactic and technique. Kids and adults use the same size court and the same equipment. So there's no negative connotation attached to that. Like, oh, I'm playing kids tennis. By using spec tennis to train tennis, you're training with progressions, which I believe is the most effective way to train someone, you can get players on the court that never thought they would play. And then like I mentioned earlier, you get people the experience of actually playing tennis as opposed to just hitting the ball. Take a look at this example pathway that I created. So if we take the ROGY pathway where you have red, orange, green, and yellow ball, a player maybe starts off in red ball when they're young, maybe five, six years old, they learn a lot of sending and receiving skills. And then before you move them to orange ball, you introduce spec tennis. So they're still on a smaller court, 44 feet long instead of the 60 foot court for orange ball tennis. They develop control and they also 
um, which, will, will, which will allow them to stay engaged and have more fun on the bigger court. Then when they get to orange ball, they can already rally in the service boxes. And so it's not very long before they can rally on the 60 foot court. And especially during junior clinics, I find that the most effective way for the kids to have fun and also create the most possibilities for you as a tennis pro is to be able to do games where it's peer versus peer instead of peers versus the coach. So by introducing spec tennis early on, you get them able to rally with each other and then the possibilities are endless. Once they have, uh, once they're in orange ball tennis on the 60 foot court, you still use spec tennis as a tool to introduce new skills, also as an engagement tool and a regression if necessary. When you get to green ball in stage four, since they learn control already in, in stages two and three, they come in with very solid, solid technique and compact swings. They don't have as much trouble adjusting to the higher bounce and bigger court. You can use spec tennis at this stage for things like taking the ball on the rise since that starts to become important as a player progresses, becoming more advanced. Then when you get to yellow ball in stage five, they've already been playing spec tennis for a few years. So their reaction skills are good. They have the ability to adapt. And again, they're not as phased by the faster, higher bouncing yellow ball. At this stage, you can use spec tennis to really develop pattern play and find a player identity so they, they can determine what kind of game style they're gonna play. If we look at other pathways out there with a traditional pathway where a player just uses a yellow ball for their whole career, I believe that the success takes longer and so the players must be fully committed. They must have a lot of patience. This could be a pathway with a higher dropout rate in my opinion. The ROGY, I think it's great as well. I use it every day, but it has low buy-in from the parents. The parents think it's like karate. And so they measure their child's success based on what ball and size court they're playing with. With the new spec pathway, we're basically improving upon that. And I think it's easier to convince players and parents that it works um, because it's easy to see the results. Here's a quote from Dan Regan, who's the director of rackets at Brook Hollow Golf Club. Um, a very prominent tennis director in Dallas. I use spec tennis a lot with my juniors because making them learn to keep the ball under control in a confined space like a pickleball court, I believe that's the way forward in junior development of tennis. Once they have control, learn to hit soft and have soft hands, then the opportunities are endless. And for me, that's phase one of development. So we're gonna talk for a while about how you can use spec tennis to develop players. And the first one is control. You can achieve a specific goal um, e more easily. So for example, if you wanted your player to rally 10 times cross court with you, that's gonna happen a lot faster. You have the ability to do more games and drills that involve kids rallying against their peers, which I mentioned earlier, which is the most fun for players and keeps them uh, the most engaged. By learning control, you end up with less one-sided players. So we've all seen those players that cannot adapt to situations. Maybe they can't play defense. They can't change their game in any way if they start losing. And so by emphasizing control from early on, we develop players that are very well-rounded. You can also use control as a performance indicator. So for example, you might say you're not playing on the 78 foot court with the green ball until you can rally 20 times cross court in spec. Better technique is more common in spec because less bad habits arise from the more compact swings. Also the proper biomechanics are promoted due to the weight of the paddle, which is 10.3 ounces. And so things like turning the shoulders and using the legs are more common. The environment is also set up so that there's less variability with the bounce. And this is especially good when training a new shot because more balls end up in the optimal strike zone. You can also bring players back to spec tennis to learn shots that are lacking or missing from their game. So don't just think this is for junior development. I also bring adult players back. Maybe they need to learn a forehand slice, for example, and it's gonna be a much better environment for them to learn it in. A couple more examples. Let's say a player doesn't have a good overhead. They can isolate it better in spec because they don't have to worry about lobs always going past them and they're able to practice the shot effectively on their own, which I think is a key to developing something. 
Um, take, for example, a 3-0 player. If you work with an overhead or work on their overhead with them in a lesson and then they try to go out and practice it with another 3-0, they get frustrated because the rallies end quickly. They don't have the skill set yet to be able to sustain a lob to overhead rally for more than a few shots. Maybe um, example number two, maybe your player needs a backhand slice. So you can train it for a few weeks in your lessons and have them practice it on their own in spec before you introduce it in tennis. And when you introduce it in tennis, they'll already be having a lot more success and less frustration. I don't know if you've heard about futsal, but from my understanding, it's a form of indoor soccer played on a smaller field. And many people can credit um, Brazil winning a lot of World Cups because a lot of the players played futsal growing up. So Neymar is an example. With this, players develop more refined touch and they improve tactically when reducing the space the opponent has to play in. Um, here's a quote from Sterling Strother, who's a prominent coach in North Carolina. Spec tennis is great for teaching strategy and tactics. Players that can see the whole court visually can see and understand patterns and tactics better. Most kids can't visually see patterns on a bigger court. When you train something in a smaller space and then open up the space, players still utilize that smaller space, which increases precision and reduces errors. So again, you can learn the patterns in a more favorable environment. And as players gets better, the shots have to be more precise. Simply hitting the ball, hitting a forehand down the line after a long cross court rally is not gonna win the point like it might in tennis. So your precision really has to increase. And although executing the pattern may be easier, winning the point on the smaller court is actually harder. So once they're able to do it, then it just becomes like cake on a tennis court when you have all that extra space. Next is you can develop great footwork patterns with spec tennis. So if we look at this chart here, the X is where the player is starting and the yellow circle with the number three is where the ball is. So I'm demonstrating that for a lot of players, especially kids, they can take three steps and get to the corner. Um, this is very important, especially with kids who have a smaller stride because they can develop bad habits on the tennis court taking too many steps. We want them moving like the pros and this is the way to get them to do it. This will translate to players getting more balls on the court, expending less energy and being in better athletic positions when they hit the ball. There's so many times when we, we need to ask ourselves, is our, player, is our player just not fast enough to get to that ball or are they just not moving efficiently? And most of the time the answer is they're not moving efficiently. Also, the most challenging footwork patterns are often paired with the most challenging shots. So for example, an open stance forehand, if we wanna train that in a live setting on a tennis court, we have to hit a very deep ball. That either means we have to hit it faster or higher, which are both very challenging settings. In spec, we can force them into that open stance forehand more easily with a slower ball. And so it's a lot easier to train something specific like that. Next, let's talk about how you can use spec tennis as a building block for any activity. So here's an example. You're probably familiar with a chart like this before where the X's are the net player positions based on where the ball is. So when the ball goes behind them and they move to a more defensive volley position, when the ball is in front of them to the opposite baseline or they move up into a volley position, into a more offensive volley position. And so we use this a lot in our doubles clinics most players don't execute it properly. Maybe they execute it in the clinic, but then the moment they go out and play social doubles, they're getting caught in between positions, moving at the wrong time, not moving fast enough, um, different things like that. And so teaching this on a smaller scale will help them build confidence and understand why they need to move like this. And then also realize that they need to speed up a little bit when they're on the tennis court because they have more ground to cover. Next example is poaching. You can see from this chart here, the player is at the net in the, and he or she is a lot more able to get that, that ball de denoted by the yellow circle um, because it's just a lot less distance to cover. So more balls are poachable, leads to more reps, 
which improves the confidence in poaching. I think one of the challenges on the tennis court is there's so much area to cover. And then also if you leave early on the poach, you feel like you're, you let your partner down by, by getting burned, leaving them hanging. In spec, if you leave early, your partner can probably still run behind you and cover the ball from the baseline. It's also great for the net player who is defending against the poach. In tennis, when you have a player poaching, that net player often gets scared. They have a, a, an aggressive ball coming right at them. In spec, you have this softball coming at you at a slower pace, and so you can work on your defensive volley skills from this position. You also don't have to modify or handicap players, and so you, don't ha you can play more normal doubles without having to change the starting position of the poacher. Here's an example of an aggressive net, net team. We often tell our players to try to get into a two-up format, especially when they get a short ball. But they almost never do, and I think one of the reasons is because of the lob. They fear getting lobbed. And so in this um, format here on the spec tennis court, they don't have that same fear. It's hard to lob over somebody's head. But on the flip side of that, the defensive team can really work on trying to make their lobs precise and develop topspin lobs and things like that. Also being able to develop dippers that create low volley situations for uh, the aggressive net team. Another example is hitting on the rise. There's often between six and eight feet behind the baseline if you're setting up on a tennis court. And so that forces players to take a lot more shots on the rise. Approach shots. There's a lot more approach opportunities in spec tennis because you can approach from nearly any shot. You don't have to be very far in the court to feel like you can volley the ball. And you're less likely to get passed or lobbed, so it's easier to build confidence. Playing singles. Many people don't play singles in tennis because it's just too intimidating. Maybe there's too much court to cover. They feel like it's too much running. But spec tennis singles is a lot more manageable. On the flip side of that, it can also be a great workout because it's harder to end the points. You can use it as more of a workout medium if you'd like to. But the point I'm trying to make here is that if you can learn to dictate and close out points in spec tennis, so finding ways to get to the net or bring your opponent to the net, then you can translate that same style to tennis to where you're playing a very, very efficient game um, and the points are shortened. So you won't feel like you have too much court to cover or too much running to do. In spec tennis, it's more likely that you'll develop a complete game because baseline winners are difficult. There's also no overhand serves. So in tennis, um, the serve and return, um, a lot of errors are made there. So either the serve goes in and the return's missed or maybe the next shot after the return. But in spec tennis, the rallies are typically gonna be longer. And so you find the need if you wanna advance to the next levels to develop all kinds of shots. So maybe a slice on both sides, touch shots, touch volleys, topspin lobs, angle overheads, and being able to serve and volley. And I think all this leads to becoming pro proficient with grip changes, which is something that a lot of players lack on the tennis court. Practicing effectively. I think any skill requires building a lot of confidence and muscle memory. And in order to do that, you need to practice outside of the lessons. But how often do our, our players practice effectively? I know I tell a lot of my players, you know, go out and practice this skill on your own. And do they do it? Most of the time they don't. I mean, there's some coaches out there that say, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to fire my clients if they don't practice. But maybe we're just not giving them the tools to be able to practice effectively. When was the last time you saw a recreational player spending 30 minutes practicing their overhead? Um, almost never. And I just think that it's because the skill is too hard to execute with a player of their level. So if you have them practice the skill with spec tennis instead, you'll be amazed at the results. Building off of that, practicing with the family. Let's not let parents hinder their child's success anymore. I think that whenever I see a family out there and I'm giving a lesson on the next court over and the kid after a few minutes isn't able to do what the parent is asking them to do, 
they start coaching. And I think this can be really bad because parents aren't often educated on how to coach their kids. And so the relationship gets strained. Maybe they teach them things that are then need to be changed later by the tennis pro. So there's not that much good that comes out of the parent coaching the kid. It's better that they just, you know, stay quiet and let the, let the coach coach them. But if they were doing spec tennis instead, they'd be having a lot more success because the, the player would be able to rally better. And so then all of these problems are alleviated. And also the parents also enjoy playing spec more than they do with the ROGY formats um, because they feel like they can take a full cut at the ball and not have to baby the ball like they might if they were playing, let's say for example, orange ball tennis with a 25 inch racket or 27 inch racket on a 60 foot court. Let's talk about match play. So when I played every team sport growing up, the thing I look for, forward to the most was the games. In tennis, I don't feel like that is the case right now for kids. Um, the tennis matches are the most nerve wracking. They're also very high pressure. Um, you can also use this example for adults as well. People playing their first USTA match, it is way too much pressure. I've seen plenty of orange ball matches being the coach of an orange ball team where players double fault four times in a row. And this just looks bad. It looks like we as coaches aren't doing a good job. We can't even get the player to serve overhand. And that, you know, the parents are wondering why they're spending all this money on tennis and their kid can't even really rally. Um, so in an effort to make players really look forward to playing matches, we should try using spec tennis for those matches. With the underhand serve, the rallies are also going to be longer. Um, everybody looks better. So the kid has a lot more fun. They look forward to the games. They don't feel like they're letting their doubles partner down if they're playing doubles. Everything is good overall. Now, that doesn't mean we stop working on the serve in tennis, but there's a time and a place for that, I believe. If you ever want to incorporate match play into your programs, but you can't due to the court space, spec tennis is a great way to do that. So let's say, for example, you have eight players in a clinic and you want them to play singles matches, but you only have two courts. Now, if you transition to spec, now you can do this. Whether you move to pickleball courts or you just set it up temporarily on the tennis court, you can get what you want out of the situation. So in case you didn't know this, there's four, four spec tennis courts can fit on one tennis court. Let's say you wanted to reduce the number of players per court, but didn't have the space to spread out more. Now you could do this with spec tennis as well. Now, some players, they might not transition to tennis and that's fine. Not every player has a desire to play tennis. Um, players, can out, players don't outgrow spec tennis. So you can have some lifelong players. And I've gotten many players that don't seem like likely candidates to play a racket sport to get on the spec tennis court and really enjoy it and continue playing it. Maybe they've slowed down physically or they get overpowered in tennis. Maybe they don't want to run much. So you can play spec tennis in a very cooperative capacity, or maybe they want to run a lot since it's harder to end the points. You can get a great workout in a small amount of time. Maybe they just want to play socially with their family. This is great for that. Or as you saw from the video, you can have those pro-like points very often. Spec tennis is also very social. So it's, there's a lot more laughter out there. You can get a, an adult beverage on the court if you need to, things like that. You can fit four spec tennis courts on one tennis court. And I think that's very important because now you can fit 16 people playing doubles, 24 people um, if you were doing a clinic, maybe six per court. During prime time hours and at indoor clubs, this is huge. I was at a club where between the hours of nine and 11 during the week, you could only have two pros teaching at once. You could only take up two tennis courts. But if you're doing the same thing with spec tennis, now you could have eight pros teaching at once and really maximize the use of space. And I've found that from giving spec tennis lessons in clinics, they get the same satisfaction and knowledge, maybe even, maybe even more satisfaction because their success rate is higher. 
in addition to lessons and clinics, you can also run leagues. I've had pretty good success with leagues. I find that the USTA leagues are so serious. Everything's about ratings and what's going, what, how is this going to affect my rating? With spec tennis leagues, it's kind of a breath of fresh air and it's a great intro to competition. So for somebody playing their first ever match, um, it's good to throw them into something a little bit less serious. They don't have to feel that unnecessary pressure. You can also have players work on a very specific goal. So let's say you wanted a player to work on approaching the net on every point and they don't want to do it because they, they're worried their rating's going to be affected, but then you have them play in the spec tennis league instead where their rating doesn't, doesn't matter. And then they can improve that skill. Tournaments also work great. You can mix levels very easily and you don't need a lot of courts to run a successful tournament. You can also convince players to play in multiple divisions. So maybe they play mixed doubles, um, gender doubles, and also singles. And you can run camps. So you can do it with your staff or even bring in guest pros. And those are a lot of fun. So let's talk about how you can get started with spec tennis. You can run a club event, anything you can think of, um, make it very social. Mixing levels works very well because there's no overhand serve and it's hard to rip ground stroke winners. So the lower level players can hang in better with the higher level ones. Also, there's no ego, egos. So players aren't as worried about losing to their peers as they might be in tennis. Here's a quote from a pro in Portland. Spec tennis is more social than tennis, not as loud as pickleball and all around a very pleasant sporting and social experience. <clears throat> you can sprinkle it into your daily lessons in clinics. So pick a skill, design a game around that skill. For example, let's say you wanna work on approaching the net. So you play offense, defense doubles where the winner of the previous point must approach the net after hitting their first shot. And maybe the reasoning is because players aren't comfortable volleying after attacking. And when you train this with the yellow ball, they have very limited success. So we want to build their confidence and not let them get discouraged. Now, let's say you sprinkle it into your, your clinic. You don't need to move to a pickleball court in the middle of your tennis clinic. You can simply do this in the service boxes if you don't have pickleball lines on the court. Example number two, maybe you want to work on defending the overhead. So you do a two up to a back game where the baseline team must lob the first ball. And your reasoning is because with your 3-0 ladies, when you do overhead games, the points are very short, maybe one to two shots. So you want to up the number of repetitions for all four players by doing this same game with spec. Now less lobs go over the net players' heads and more overheads are returnable by the baseline team. Another way you can get started is promote a themed clinic. For example, we're gonna do an eight week singles clinic where we work on improving patterns and recognizing opportunities to execute those patterns. You can maybe do a doubles net player madness clinic where we improve all areas of your net game. So when you get back to the tennis court, you'll know how to hit many types of volleys and in what situations to use each. When you, when you do this themed spec clinic, this is different, the opposite of sprinkling it into your daily clinics. This is a spec tennis only uh, situation. So both have their benefits. You can offer a free or reduced price intro to tennis class to members that haven't participated in your tennis program. So depending on what, what kind of um, demographic you have at your facility, you may have members that aren't tennis members, but maybe they're swim members and they walk by the tennis courts, but they never set foot on them. So using spec tennis to get these players into an intro class, you're more likely to get them to continue with their program because they'll see that they can have success right away. You can use it for team parties. So typically at the end of a USTA season, we have a party for the team. Here's a 3-0 team party that I did. And it's nice because they play with the same players uh, all year long in doubles. And so it's nice for them to be able to mix it up and throw something fresh at them. It's important that you educate your players and parents as to 
why you're going to start cross training with spec and all it really takes is a five minute conversation about progressions and just talking about how you feel progressions are everywhere in life we learn things like addition and subtraction before we learn multiplication and so we need to also use this in tennis you can market it as new and exciting um, people really appreciate new and I was listening to a USPTA webinar a few weeks ago and the director was talking about how people appreciate trying new programs even if they fail. They appreciate you trying to continuously better the program as a whole. So spec tennis can be a hit right from the start. It depends on how you position it. Um, for example, at Brook Hollow Golf Club in Dallas with Dan Regan, he got 32 players to come out to his first event and this was before he even reached out to me to discuss spec tennis. If you don't have pickleball courts at your facility, that is no problem at all. There are no modifications needed if you wanna play spec tennis starting today. Um, you can play in the service boxes if you wanna set up some temporary courts. You just need maybe 10 minutes per court. You can use quick start nets, portable pickleball nets, or play over the tennis net. Here's a parking lot lesson. This is a true story a couple weeks ago. I actually was trying to give a tennis lesson and the, the courts were full. And so rather than wait or cancel the lesson, I set this up in the parking lot and I did a spec tennis lesson instead. It was with an adult player and he enjoyed it so much that I think we're gonna begin training him with spec tennis for a while um, before transitioning those skills back to tennis. In terms of the, the market position, I think spec is in a good position in the market. Um, there's other short court racket sports out there, but none that utilize the pickleball court or have as much direct translation to tennis. I think with many other alternatives, you just have kind of one shot, but because there's so many uses of spec tennis, the chance of it catching on at your club in at least one aspect is pretty high. Also with the fact that there's more pickleball courts being built daily, I think this gives spec some large upside potential. Now listening to this, you're probably wondering, maybe you tried pop tennis at your facility and it didn't catch on, why would spec tennis? Well, I think because it maximizes the use of the space. Um, it uses a slower ball, less powerful paddle in smaller court, which creates longer rallies. What if other clubs in your area are not playing spec yet? Well, I think you can look at this as a big opportunity. Um, you can start creating buzz about it and get people coming from other areas to your facility um, to try out this new and exciting opportunity. Why not just use a junior racket and an orange or red ball on a pickleball sized court? I think that there's a negative stigma attached to using junior equipment and so I think the ROG Y balls have been around for a while. If this was something that that adults enjoy doing. I think it would be a sport, its own sport by now. My club has been tennis only since it started. How do I convince them to add spec tennis? I don't think there's any convincing needed, actually. Um, you treat it like any other tool. So for example, do you have to get permission from your general manager to buy tennis court equipment, maybe such as cones, quick start nets, etc.? If the answer is no, then it should be the same with spec tennis. You're just bringing in a new, a new tool to help with tennis development. So for example, you could buy some paddles and you're gonna use that to assist with tennis player development. So in summary, I think that spec tennis is a great bridge to tennis. It can also be standalone. It's a fun new amenity to add to your facility. It keeps things fresh. It really maximizes the space by allowing you to fit four times the number of players on one court. It can be a way to attract new players to the court. It does not create a noise issue, so you can play it in any environment. It also allows players to reach a higher level um, because success comes sooner and more often, and they're able to develop a more well-rounded game. It has a high lifetime customer value because you can keep players in lessons and clinics and Maybe if they feel like they, they have outgrown it, which is hard to do because there's 
five oh plus players that still can be challenged by spec tennis, um, then you just have them transition to regular tennis as well. It's an additional revenue source for your club with lessons, clinics, camps, leagues, and tournaments. And it really differentiates your club from others in the area, so it makes you stand out. I think that pickleball is um, becoming more of a must-have at, at clubs now. It's, it's great to offer that amenity, but everybody's doing it. Um, you can really differentiate yourself by offering spec tennis also. It requires no facility modifications because it can be played on a wide range of surfaces. <clears throat> And I really believe that spec tennis is the key to growing tennis again. Um, I think that should be a major focus for us in the tennis industry is how are we going to grow tennis? Because if we just sit there and keep doing what we're doing, you know, it's really, really affecting our, our jobs and our lifestyle. And it's also a blast for all ages and skill levels. So I ask you, which path will you take? This green line is the path with spec tennis. So they're both trying to get to the same destination, but I find that the green path is going to be a lot faster with less obstacles than the red path. So how can you get started? Um, first off, reach out to me. We can discuss demo paddles, etc. Spec tennis at yahoo.com is my email. And for the consumer, a set of four paddles retails for 340. Um, just so you can see the prices that somebody would pay online. If you have platform tennis at your club, a lot of East, Co East Coast clubs have platform tennis, uh, you can try the platform tennis paddles to try out spec tennis. Some other resources are spectennis.com and I'm on social media at spec tennis on both Facebook and Instagram. And if you go to YouTube and search spec tennis, you'll find a lot of videos. Those are also on spectennis.com. Um, thanks a lot for spending the time um, to hang out with me. And I hope you got something fun out of this presentation. And take care.